welcome back to the Art to Life podcast. We are starting a new year and it would be so cool if this podcast came out on New Year's Day, but almost comes out a couple days after. But I know if you're like me, you're thinking a lot about uh, the new year coming up ahead. And of course, uh, that's what I wanna talk about. I love planning and I love this time of year. And I've done many variations of planning and thinking about uh, the new year. And for the most part, the way I used to do it uh, was kind of a fail (laughs) because I would add all these things in that I didn't have time for. And it was, it was unrealistic and it was based on doing all these things that I really couldn't fit in. And it really wasn't answering some of the more important questions, which I'm gonna share with you today, um, mainly about how we wanna feel, right? The New Year's resolutions, this is not that, but this is a great time to start thinking about how you want to be, how you wanna feel, in the new year. And I love this because it's not really based on doing new things. Um, It's about a new approach, which this is really what Art to Life is all about, right? You know, how do we become more? How do we do what we love and, and make amazing art and create incredible things and have energy left over? All of that that overflows into our life. I'm not gonna be talking today too much about uh, all the things we wanna wanna be, um, uh, you know, all the things we wanna do, but more about the things that we want to feel, how we wanna be. Um, And and there's questions, and and I love good questions. And so I'm always collecting them, and I'll share some with you today. Uh, But I love thinking about how we wanna approach the year. Uh, if you're out running or walking or listening to this, you know, and I, I think of it this way, you know, I think it's like, well, you're not sitting at your desk, you're not taking notes. And it's a, it's a, my hope is that you, you gain one, one little snippet of something in this that, you know, will, will make a difference for you, you know? So uh, I try to talk and kind of, kind of keep it real simple, but the word spaciousness uh, is, is a good one, is a good word. When I think of that word, for some reason, it just, my shoulders go down. And it's really about having space, (laughs) you know, that makes you so happy. Because when you have space in your life and you're not cramming all these things in, um, you can really enjoy each of them more. And and new ideas come in those those periods when there's emptiness. So, So that's how I kind of want to sort of set this up, frame this up. So the first thing is around uh, thinking about the year, not as one uh, continuous stream of days uh, that you, you know, the sand through the hourglass is diminishing and it gets more stressful at the end of the year because you have less time to do all the things you said you were going to do. It isn't that at all, but more around dividing the year up in to kind of seasons, right? And it turns out it already is divided up into seasons. You know, so much of what we, of, of how we are and how we want to be, we're, we're here on an earth. Like we have seasons, we have, we have that, um, we have winter, right? We have spring, we have summer and we have fall. And you know, in Art to Life, uh, more and more and more, this is how we think of what we're doing. I think of this, how I'm doing, all the things I'm doing in my art, all the things, the workshops, everything, it more and more is put into a schedule based upon the seasons, because the seasons are different and we're different in the seasons. And it's kind of a cool way to think about it. And, <clears throat> you know, I learned this from a few people uh, that have pushed my thinking along this. Stu McLaren, who's an amazing entrepreneur and, and, and business uh, leader, teacher, entrepreneur. Um, and, and he definitely thinks of doing something in seasons, right? You know, uh, that 
we can focus on something, but just take a season. We don't have to say, we're gonna work hard all year long and do 500 paintings or whatever. We can take a season and that's easier to do. And, and I relate to this from running so much because you know, you can go from aid station to aid station and these, I used to do uh, really long endurance races and it's how you think about it not the whole thing, but parts, right? All I gotta do is I'm gonna run this part really, really quickly and smoothly because it's kind of downhill, then there's an aid station. And then when I get there, I'm gonna reassess how I'm doing and then set off in another way. And so we're really, this is about attunement. This is about having opportunities in the year to adjust to how you're doing the year. And seasons do affect us. So, you know, thinking of the, um, thinking about the year this way is helpful, right? What am I gonna do for the first three months? What am I gonna do for the second three months? And then this thinking, and I've noticed over the years that certain seasons are harder for me and I'm working really hard in them. And other seasons like summer, Almost always, I think I'm gonna do a lot, but I, it ends up being kind of a wash. Like I end up taking some time off and, and I'm falling asleep more, and, you know, just saying yes to things. Like there's so many cool things just to play. There's more, it's more playful, it's lighthearted. Um, even the clothing, you know, that you're wearing, it's uh, for at least where we are, it's a lot warmer. So I'm not, you know, it's just, it's just lighter. And I never really thought about this, like I'm working hard and then I'm kind of resting in a way, you know, different seasons. And my girlfriend, sweetheart, Cherie Healy, she's a life coach. And we were having this conversation and she goes, yeah, exactly. But you know, this, you rest and you work and it's, and she's very into the seasons uh, of, of how human beings, women especially, by the way, are attuned to this already. And I love how she describes it. Um, uh, it's, it's about um, being and doing, right? I always think of like working hard and playing, you know, working hard and sleeping, but it's so good, right? Doing, and, uh, and, and just being. And obviously we're doing all the time. We always, you know, we gotta pay parking tickets and we gotta pick up dry cleaning. What are all the things we're doing it? But if you can start thinking of these seasons, so if you have, if you have uh, winter, right? Like winter is for me, um, it's, it's about, you know, this is the holidays. This is, it's cold, you're kind of inside and, you know, that, that has a, a sort of um, reflective quality, right? And it's, it's a bit more introverted. Now I do a lot during that season, but it is, it is really about being, if you think about it, you know, like it's, you know, and it's dark, you know, the days are shorter. There's a hibernation quality to it. And just being in that and then spring hits and for me, that's the Creative Visionary Program. For you guys who are new here, we, Art to Life Create runs a, a program and we are preparing for that. It, it's gonna be, you know, it starts in the spring, it's in March, and, but all the work for me uh, is up front, preparing everything, reshooting videos, figuring out the direction. What are we adding? What are we taking away? It's really, uh, spring is, is a really, um, you know, it's a really uh, active time. We do this program, right? We, we, um, we're making art. I'm, it's always a season of creativity this, this spring. So, you know, you have this <clears throat> January, February, March, which is kind of the cold shut down wintry time. And then you enter into spring, March, April, May, and that's very doing. And then summer comes and that's kind of more restful. And it ends up kind of, that's what happens. Like we're not designed to just go a thousand miles an hour all year long. And then we kind of go through summer and then I, maybe this is true for you, I'm curious. When fall comes, it's like you start thinking more about what you're doing, what you're wanting to do, right? And you kind of, that's when things get in motion, kids go back to school, whatever. It's just this, I think kids go back to school because this is a time where they, we can focus. 
And then that takes us, you know, that's, that's that fall period, right? And then we work and we do stuff and we get stuff done. We're doing. And then we have this ease, this more of a being in winter again. And it's cyclical. So I love this because we're not fighting nature. You know, it's like when we, we, we're awake and we're doing, and then we fall asleep <laughs> and it's perfect. They complement each other. It's designed that way. And for those of you who have tried to just do, and then you stay up late and you just keep doing too long, it totally doesn't work. You need to go from one to the other. So if you start, start going on a, you know, the tides come in, the tide goes out. Breathing, we breathe out, we breathe in. Everything, all the patterns in nature, everything follows this. And we're part of that. And so this is not hard to do. In fact, this is the easy way to do it. But if you're not thinking about it this way, we start thinking that we have this 365 days to get a lot of stuff done and we have all these commitments we've made, these New Year's resolutions, I'm gonna go to the gym every single day or I'm gonna you know, do this many paintings every single week or I'm gonna start a new business or you know, all the things that we add on. But if you're not thinking about, you know, just thinking about the natural flow of things, if you can work with the tides, it's so much easier. You know, the Golden Gate Bridge, where I live, uh, has it's a you know huge bay in San Francisco Bay, and the Golden Gate Bridge is this narrow little channel. And when the tide is coming in, if you and I used to kite surf out there, and if you want to go out when the tide's either slack, neutral, or coming in, because obviously if you get in trouble, you wash into civilization. But when the tide's going out. All that water in the bay, in the different areas in Marin, uh, Richardson Bay, all those drain out this pretty narrow opening underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. And it, it rips out there. It goes, it's like six knots or something, you know. It's like walking pace. You, you're going out to the ocean and you don't want to be messing around having trouble in that outgoing tide. You can't swim against it. I mean, it's really a thing. Um, so... We want to work with the natural systems. And that's kind of great. That's a given, right? So that's a beautiful thing to think about. You know, how can your seasons of doing and being uh, complement how your life goes, what you're looking to, to do? So this is not so much what you're going to do, it's, but it's how you're going to do and how is it going to make you feel. So I just love that. Now, the third point here is around curation. And I, for any of you who have taken my programs and courses, you know that uh, discernment and choosing what's in my bones that I desire, this is something that I lean heavily into. It's the path to authenticity. It's, it's getting clear about what those things are. And part of this conversation I had with Cherie uh, was around um, this amazing conversation she shared, this question that she shared with me um, around visioning what it is, where we want to be, how we want to feel, what could it look like? And I love this uh, time of year to do this. What could things be? What would, forget about, okay, I don't have the resources. Forget about, oh, well, I, you know, my mom, I have to stay in the area because, in, you know, I'm speaking from personal experience, you know, I had five years where I was looking after my mom and I, it was, it got in the way a lot. I never let it take me down because there was always work around. So I don't want you to envision anything with, don't think of the obstacles, just think of what is possible for you. What could it look like? And the way she said it was just so beautiful. Um, who would I be uninterrupted? It's so good, right? Without the interruptions, without, without the things that get in my way. Because the energy that comes from feeling what that could be is really useful. <laughs> and it gets things done and it's motivating. Um, we're into curating our art. Right? I know a lot of you who I'm speaking to are artists or people who are interested in creativity or are interested in making things. Um, 
we want to make a great result, but the, the thing that makes the great result, and this is the cornerstone of, of all my teachings, is is the thing that is our biggest project, which is our life. We want to create an aesthetic life, something beautiful, um, something authentic, something we can call a work of art. It can be so good. And the results of that, when we apply our art making process thinking, we do this to our art, we take that thing and we put all kinds of energy into it and we choose things and we focus on it and we can make it amazing, but the same applies into our life. And so, you know, what is it as you're walking along right now or doing your laundry or whatever, but I just want to ask you that question. What's in the bones? What's in your bones that you desire? Who would you be if you were uninterrupted, right? And it's the work is here right now. You can do this work right now. It has nothing to do with the practicality of it. Start that imagining because that moves the needle more than any list of resolutions, uh, anything. The fourth point here is around presence and, you know, how we go after the things. This is a little bit more around the doing right now. Um, part of the teaching that I gleaned from Stu McLaren was around these seasons and and not trying to put too much in. I'm, a, I'm an overdoer. I'm a seven on the Enneagram and I tend to say yes to everything. It's a problem. <laughs> good, good, sometimes hard, other times. But I tend to put too much in. I tend to say yes to too many things. But if you can choose, you have these seasons, right? And chart, it's so simple, right? Four, four boxes, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall, you know, right there, you just draw that out. And in those, you do one primary thing, you know, one big thing, right? For me, for me, the spring is the Creative Visionary Program. It's what I'm doing. It's, I'm so into it. I focus on it. And, and that's the primary thing I'm doing. I'm not going to try and do another primary thing. I wouldn't choose an ultra race to train for during that time because my energy wants to be focused on this one thing. Where your energy goes, that's where the, the, the shifts happen and the, and the results occur. You just focus on something. And, and so you have room for one big thing, but you can also, if you're like me, you know, and, it, and you, there's, there's room in there for a kind of a secondary thing, but it's secondary. And that's the thing you have to, you have to know that it's secondary. You got to get those priorities straight. Otherwise it becomes stressful. If two things or three things are all equally strong, then, then it's stressful. The stress comes from making all the New Year's resolutions or having so many things that you have to do. They're all equally important. You haven't yet discerned, you haven't yet curated what it is that's important. What's the number one thing? And so once you get that, that takes so much stress out. But because you, because you already know the answer, right? If something comes along that is not that, it's easy to say, okay, well maybe you know, I only have two days to really, for extra things, I'm gonna pass on this. Cause the other five, I'm working on this main thing. I already chose it. This would make an incredible year if I could accomplish this in this season, or I could move the needle along on this project. You know, um, it's not, and, and a sort of side point to this, it's not stressful doing all the things and I, I used to get this confused. It's because I would say, oh, well, if I didn't have all these things to do, um, my life would be so much better. And then I'm, when I'm doing the thing, finally, not worrying about it, I actually love it. I like doing the thing, but it's the thinking about the thing that, that holds me up, that creates the stress. It's the thinking about doing the thing, especially if there's other things to do as well, all the things. So that's helpful for me because I know once I start this podcast, for example, I could worry about this, but once I'm doing it, like 
I love this. I love thinking about these things. I love sharing things. I love the feet, like the whole thing. I love it. And would, it's not about eliminating a podcast or not doing your painting or getting rid of these things. It's about doing one thing at a time, right? So this singular, singularity of thinking that I'm just gonna be present for this one thing for a while and then I will do another thing, but while I'm doing it, I will be into it. And by the way, this is totally to doing, doing art. So if you find yourself kind of stressful, it's not because of all the things, it's because you're thinking about doing all the things and you haven't chosen. And then just start, just start doing it because that's the easier place to be. Running is a blast. Thinking about it, worrying about it, feeling guilty about it, you know, getting out the door, telling people you don't have to, that's the hard part. And when you're out there running around, it's a blast. So that's really helpful for me. I don't know if that resonates, uh, resonates for you. And by the way, just, that doing, learning is doing also. And, and I've had to give myself a huge hall pass in this area because I used to do everything myself. I used to think I had to know everything myself. And it turns out, I mean, just listen to podcasts. Look, there's brilliance out there and there's so many people that can help you that have insights that you will never have that are experts in things and teachers and people we need to bring in to help us. And that might feel like I gotta, I gotta like stop and I gotta learn more about art making or I gotta understand color better to do this. And I feel like, oh my God, my pride stopped now and I'm learning. I have to learn something, but understand that learning is vital part. And, and if you're interested in a year that is about change and going to new territory, learning is part of that. Like fit that in, you know, and, and it's kind of, Learning is, is like doing light because someone's there to help you. When is it good to do learning? Like summers are really good. Like do an online course, do a thing in the spring when you have more energy, right? Um, take it, you know, choose when to learn, but learning from someone is generally easy, is slightly easier and it's interesting. It's like being a college student. It's, at least for me, it was great, <laughs> you know? You go to class, there's all these presentations, you sit there, you're turned on to really great stuff. Yeah, you have to do papers and everything, but learning is an important part. Um, you know, think about what you're gonna learn, what you need to learn to make these seasons work for you. Maybe this learning you're having right now, um, I'm sharing this with you, so maybe this will reframe how you think about the year. Maybe you'll move that trip uh, into summer or you'll, you know, work on something, push that show till fall or whatever, right? Um, so learning's part of that. But when you look back on, on, on your experiences, you always just remember what you were doing when you were doing it. You don't really remember how hard it was so much before you started it. Right, like so when I think about, I just did this painting as I shared with you guys, this painting for my daughter, Lila, and you know, on this podcast. So if you're interested, it's a couple episodes ago. And uh, there was, a, I was worried about it. I thought more about it, but once I actually got going on it, it was great. And I, I shared it, it was, it was really fun. It was such a fun, the whole thing was fun and great. And I liked how it turned out even, that was a bonus. Um, and I don't remember, now, I, I remember I was really procrastinating about it. I wasn't gonna do it. I didn't have time to do it. I remember driving down there on a Saturday and I was too busy, you know, all that disappears. So when you're thinking about do, doing something, it's front loaded with the problems, you know? But when you look back on it, which is the memory and the takeaway, it, it, you have energy from that. So just know that, that's that little peculiar thing um, that, you know, the hardness is front loaded always. And then looking back, it is, um, it gives you juice. So you gotta get through the hard part up front, unfortunately, you know, and then get into that. And then you'll have it because you'll have done the thing and that gives you energy if it's aligned and congruent with what you wanna do and all the things to go to the next thing. 
I was on this, uh, this, this last year, one of the coolest memories I have is of uh, backpacking with my daughters. We did a backpack trip. We met in Colorado and we did this trip and we had this really hard day. And uh, my younger daughter, Hannah, you know, had been doing more hiking. And so she was way ahead of us and we were at elevation. And my older daughter, Lila, and I were kind of behind and Lila, it was a hard climbing thing. We climbed up this big mountain all day long. And we were really tired. And we got to this um, camp area, this lake, finally, and the sun was going down. It was beautiful. We were so tired. And, and, uh, but there was this amazing kind of campsite across on the other side of the lake. And I knew that that's when the sun would come up in the morning. It, would, it was beautiful on the lake. But there were these crummier ones kind of up in the trees. And there was probably mosquitoes there. But we just wanted to stop, you know. But we didn't. And it was me kind of pushing a little bit and they're like, what are we doing? You know, come on, you guys, it'll be so worth it. And yes, now I know we don't even think about that day that it was hard to go that extra half a mile, but we have all these photos and they're beautiful of where we camped. I remember waking up in the morning and, and I was taking this picture and I'm like, this is why we walked a little bit more right here, right now, that. That is so, I'll never forget that morning waking up with the light hitting this mountain, this beautifully still lake, right? It's about presence, right? And, and about this, this um, being in it and having that focus, right? And choosing when to do that. Now, the fifth kind of point here is on something that I've noticed and I started tracking this a number of years. Like we want to forget about all the things. Yes, we need to, you know, I want to do an art show next year and I want all the things, but how do I want to feel next year? And I want to feel light. I want to feel more joyful than sad. I want to feel energetic, right? I want to feel buoyant, all these things. And you know, what, what makes me happy? You know, how, what's going on? And I don't know, if you're like me, but like some days are amazing and, and then other days are harder, obviously. And if we can get more days where they feel more flowy, our art's better, our relationships are better, we're better, we have more energy for other people. You know, all the things that, that we want for ourselves, like everything's more possible. So I started tracking this um, and I just started writing down what were, what were in those good days, you know? And it's like, okay, well, good news maybe is what does it, but it, it's not that, you know, you hear, oh, I sold a painting and it's like, well, that was a good day. So I'm happy all day, but that wasn't really it. It wasn't a really about the things so much, but it was about what was in the day. And um, so I started tracking it and I, know, I wrote down things like when I spent time with people, well, I really looked at these, at the Arts Life workshops because I'm really always, I always have a great, all my days are at these workshops are really good. And it's like, well, what is that? You know, well, um, there's connection, right? So I realized that I'm not so good if I just stay in my studio all the time. I need to connect with people daily. I need to have that, that connection. I need to work out. Like that's that's something I have to have, or I should have if I want a really good time. You know, I need to go on a run or whatever, go for a swim. I need that. I like to <clears throat> create art, right? That creativity, that's a huge part for me. Um, and I learned this from the workshops. I, I like to, um, I notice I have a better day if I've been laughing, you know, if stuff's happening that keeps me lightful, light, and, and there's, a, there's a sense of play. You know, we talk about play, I talk about play a lot in our art making, how important that is, where we're just so naturally ourselves. So it makes sense that this is something in our lives that we need. And we need to also feel our heart, our soul, right? We need, we really do need to sort of be connected to our intuition. We need to have gratitude, right? We, it feels so amazing to give people something, to help somebody. And so I kind of, I literally started writing these things down and then I kind of got into these. So I got these buckets, right, of, and these essential, uh, sort of essential needs of myself. 
which I think relate to a lot of other people. I've taught this before. And so I'm just gonna give you like the flyover because you know, if you're out and about today, you know, just be thinking of these categories, these buckets of areas that I need to have every day. To have an amazing day, I need these. And this is how I describe them. Love, and, I'll, and then I'll break them out. Love, body, art, uh, play, and soul. And love is connection, right? It's vulnerability, it's self-love, right? We need that, obviously. And, you know, uh, that's connection. That can be talking to my daughter on the phone. That can be uh, being with my sweetheart. That can be uh, sitting with someone at a workshop and really sharing what kind of art they're making or where they're wanting to go. Um, so all of those things, or, 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 or having trouble and having uh, being able to call a friend and share with them like what's hard for me and they understand me and they can help me and I can go to someone for help. And then the body part is just, you need good sleep, you need good food, right? Exercise, self-care, all of that, that's part of it. And then art, and art, as you probably realize, I don't define as that thing that I make or that sculpture. Art is kind of bigger than that. It's just in the world of creating. And that can look like, your your financial spreadsheet that can look like you know your everyday tasks you know your learning how you bring things together right it's the kind of creative part of your life and and i love thinking of your life in itself as a work of art you know how we put all the pieces together how we problem solve is our art how we think about doing things is our art so we need that Doing this little playful uh, thinking about the new year is art. It's artful. It's how we put things together, how we solve the problems for ourselves. That is our art, right? Painting is just about a million yes and no answers. Do I like this? Do I like that? Do I move this here? Yes, no, yes, no. It's problem solving. And that's what, how I call art. So suddenly, how I go to the DMV, which I hate, but how I do it, there's an opportunity, if it's art, to like do it in a different way. How can I go to the DMV in a way that's more aesthetic, that's a, that, that fills me in a way? Maybe I talk to people in line. Maybe I bring my laptop and I write there. Maybe I wait to go to the DMV and while I'm sitting there in line, I have that amazing conversation with somebody and I call them, right? So, so that's, that's why I have art. I have to have art. And then of course, making my art is art. Um, I need that every single day, every single day. I love to have that in there. If I'm looking for the incredible day, I need play. And this it was the one, surprisingly for me, that I wasn't as, as, that was the one that was missing for me when I did all this data. I literally would score myself each day on a spreadsheet, did I laugh? And at a workshop, constantly. But in the rest of my life, a little bit, and some days, so I would go like five days without laughing. And, and it's easy to do, at least for me, I couldn't believe it. So I started noticing where the holes were. And I, you know, I think I'm really adventurous and I, but I would, I would, that's the first thing to get cut, you know, going on a run and not even having a plan of where you're going or going to someplace new or different exploration. So when you realize that you need play, that can be, Hey, let's go to a restaurant. Let's go to that new place that's 20 miles from here. Remember we saw it at the end of that dock and that guy, that fisherman guy's got that little barbecue, I think on Sunday, you know, that's play, right? When you don't know the outcome, just like play is when you don't not know the outcome to your art, it does the same thing for you. You need that, at least I do. And then soul is how I describe this sense of Man, don't be going so fast that you don't appreciate what, what you're, where you're sitting and who you're sitting next to, right? What, what are you grateful for? You know, what, what mirac miraculous things have happened to you? You know, I come to these workshops and um, I am just, I'm just dazzled that I 
and, and so grateful that I get to be involved in this and, and be in this beautiful place and meet all these extraordinary human beings and have time to drop in with them and listen and see what they're making. Uh, you know, connecting with that daily, I think is important. And, and s sifting through what, what it is you really desire, you know, using your intuition, getting that stronger. So, so these five buckets of love, body, art, play, and soul, um, they're great kind of guardrails, right? They're great buckets. And when I got just minor things in each of those areas, my, my numbering, it would be like, if it was an okay day, it'd be 150, because it was one out of 10. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. I, I went crazy with this um, for a long time. Um, but I, a really good day was like 180. I think my best day was 186. It was incredible. And it wasn't like because of news or any externalities. It was because of how I orchestrated things. I share all this with you uh, because I'm, we're looking for how you can think about how you want to feel this year, you know, and then fit into that all the things you want to do, right? If two art shows sound amazing to you, but that's going to make you feel a certain way, maybe stressed out and it's so repetitive and you're going to be making art for two seasons in a row heavily, um, maybe in light of like the, the, the New Year's resolution is to feel a certain way and then you adjust all the doing to that. It's gotten me just so excited just thinking about it um, for myself and, you know, and again, we, we carry this forward. I carry this forward in Art to Life, uh, how our, where the coaches are, how we're all working together, doing a thing, as well as in my personal life. So I really, I hope this was helpful and there are some amazing things coming uh, for Art to Life and for you guys uh, who are listening. And uh, so if you're interested, uh, we've got some, awesome workshops, a whole bunch of exciting things for 2024. Um, but if you want to stay more connected, uh, I have this Sunday blog where I'm sharing stuff. It's like four or five minutes, little teachings, little things around art making, little tips, tricks. I interview people real quick, just stuff to like juice your day. So again, thanks for being here. And I will see you next week on the Art to Life podcast. Thanks so much, you guys. Okay, bye.